Imagine this. It's a hectic morning at the Smiths. The coffee is brewing. It's giving off that, that comforting smell that we love. And it's the only calm thing in a house that's full of a chaos, morning chaos. The kids, they're, they're fighting over who gets the last of the cereal. The TV's loud with some bad story and some country far off. And, and suddenly Sarah Smith shouts above the noise, Dear God! And everyone stops cold. Even the dogs look up, startled. Now Sarah isn't swearing. No, she's truly crying out to God because she's had enough of the noise and she just wants a moment of peace. A moment where her family can remember what is really important. Doesn't it sound familiar? <laughs> the scene could be from any of our homes where life's daily rush often leaves just little room for the quiet moments where faith lives. And we all feel this gap sometimes. And it's a big gap between knowing our faith is important and actually living it out where it matters most in our home every day, not just on Sundays. Today, we're continuing our series, Blueprints for a Blessed Family. Last time, we talked about building our families on a foundation of love like Paul showed us in Ephesians. Today we are moving from laying down love to building up faith with our next step, faith in every room. We're going to dive deep into Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9, where we learn to not just believe in faith, but to weave it into our everyday routines. I mean, how can we make faith a real part of every room in our homes, not just something that we talk about. We're here to figure out how to, to close this gap between Sunday faith and everyday faith. How do we bring it into every rushed morning, every mealtime, every bedtime? How do we make our faith as real, as present, as the comforting aroma of that morning coffee? Well, as we explore this, let's think about our own homes. Can we find God in the chaos? Can we teach our children to see him in their daily routines? Today's message is called Faith in Every Room. Now, our main idea is this. Faith shapes daily moments. Faith shapes daily moments. So let's find out together how we can make that happen. One, as we love God fully, love God freely. Love God fully, love God freely. When Moses stood before the Israelites with the wilderness behind him and, and the promised land before them, he, he didn't just give them a set of rules. He gave them a compass for their souls. He said this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Now this wasn't just advice, it was the cornerstone of their existence, the heart of the covenant between God and his people, delivered at a very pivotal moment in their journey. Now historically, the Shema, as this passage is known, served not only as a daily prayer, but a very way of life. And it instructed the Israelites to weave their love for God into the very fabric of their existence, ensuring that their faith wasn't confined just to the tabernacle. It was meant to be lived out loud in every action, with every breath, in every room of their homes. Now let's bring it into our lives. What does it mean for us to love God with all of our heart, soul, and strength in the context of our everyday routines? And how can we make such a profound love a tangible part of our daily lives and not just this lofty ideal that we aspire to on Sundays? 
Well, first, loving God means that we recognize him in the details. It's about seeing God, not just in our morning prayers or Sunday worship, but in the way that we choose to live our moments. Every decision, from how we manage our finances to to how we react in traffic, it's a reflection of our love for God. I consider this, right? When, When you make breakfast, do you grumble about the monotony and that job that you have to go to that honestly you're just tired of? Or do you use that time to thank God for the food, for the ability to provide for your family, for the day, for those that God has blessed you with in your family around the table? You see, it's these small moments that we truly practice loving God fully. It's where our faith moves from our heads to our hearts to our hands. And what about loving God more freely? You know, this means that our love for God is not driven by fear or obligation, but by a natural, joyous expression of our hearts. It's choosing to to weave this devotion into our daily actions so seamlessly that It becomes as habitual as us checking our phones. But here's where it gets real. Let's talk about integrating this love into our family life. How can we, as families, love God fully and freely? Well, it starts with intentional practices. It could be just as simple as as starting each day with a, a family verse, or with a prayer before everyone heads out the door. Now these acts, although they just take a few minutes, and as small as they may seem, they plant seeds of faith in the soft soil of children's hearts. But beyond words, like loving God with all of our strength involves actions. Maybe it means turning off the TV half an hour earlier, to spend time discussing the day's blessings and challenges. Now, these aren't just good habits. They're acts of worship, ways for us to show God that our love is more than just lip service. And here is the call to action for all of us. What if this week, each one of us here finds one way to demonstrate our love for God in our daily routine? Maybe it's just replacing that complaint with a word of gratitude or choosing patience in a moment of frustration. I mean, imagine the impact if every family takes up this challenge. What if our church becomes known not just for the sermons and songs that we hear on Sunday, but for the love that we live out every day? Let me ask you this. Are you prepared to not only say you love God, but to show it in every aspect of your life. See, this is what it means to love God fully and freely. It's not just a command, it's the best way to live. And as we reflect on this, let us be inspired by the Israelites who carried the words of Deuteronomy in their hearts as they walked into the unknown. Let us too step boldly into our everyday worlds, carrying this command as our banner, loving God in every room of our lives. Having explored how we can love God fully and freely in every aspect of our lives, we naturally progress to the next vital step in our faith journey, teaching this love and devotion to our children. See, the love that we embody isn't just for our own spiritual growth. It's a legacy that we pass down, shaping how the next generation understands and interacts with God. And so as we commit to loving God with all of our heart, our soul and strength, we must also consider how is this commitment witnessed by and instilled in our children? It's not merely about teaching them doctrines and truth, but it's showing them through our daily actions and decisions, how these beliefs dynamically influence our lives. 
So now let's delve into how can we effectively teach our kids in every interaction that we share with them. It's more than scheduled Bible studies. It's about making every moment an opportunity to demonstrate the faith we profess. So as we move into this next point, we're going to explore practical ways for us to ensure that our faith shapes not only our lives, but it influences the lives of our children, teaching them daily through both word and deed. Teach kids deeply. Teach kids daily. Teach kids deeply. Teach kids daily. Now, teaching our children about faith, it's a responsibility, but it's more of a privilege. It's about passing down a legacy of belief that shapes not just their spiritual outlook, but their entire approach to life. Deuteronomy 6, verses 6 and 7, it tells us, And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. Now historically, this directive was given as the Israelites were prepared to enter into the promised land, a land that was filled with new cultures and ideologies. This command here to weave God's word deeply into the fabric of their daily life was crucial for maintaining a faith that is distinct amidst the pervasive foreign influences. This historical backdrop reveals the importance of a constant daily spiritual education to preserve faith across the generations, especially in diverse settings. But theologically, this passage also underscores the omnipresence of God. His presence in every aspect of our lives. It's a a big fancy word, omnipresence, but it means simply that God is everywhere. And he is involved in all parts of our lives. He's not confined to specific places or, or times. So the Bible should permeate every moment, whether it's big or small. And it's vital that we teach our children that the Bible from the very earliest days in the nursery right up into the graduation from high school, this education is far more than learning cute songs and enjoying snacks. It's about impressing God's word on their hearts. Our Sunday school teachers and Mission friends, leaders, they bear a significant responsibility to ensure that God's word is conveyed effectively. And as parents and guardians, it's equally important to ensure that our children are here and present. Because the seeds planted in these formal settings at church are essential for fostering deep and enduring faith. See, as we teach... At church, those teachings are reinforced at brought to life in the informal moments at home. This is where our faith becomes visible and really tangible. Discussing a Bible verse over dinner or pointing out God's creation in a walk, reflecting on a Sunday sermon are all ways that we show our children that our faith is not confined to the church buildings, but it is active and alive in every single part of our lives. Now, why is this dual approach important? Because it reflects how our faith is meant to be lived out according to scripture. See, it's not just about the few hours we spend in church every week. It's about how those lessons are lived out at home. It's both the formal education in the church and the informal, spontaneous teachings at home that provide a well-balanced faith. So how do we embed God's truth in our children's daily routines? Well, are we taking advantage of both the structured teaching here at church and the teachable moments at home? Are we showing our children that God is as relevant on Monday morning as he is on Sunday morning? 
This week I challenge each of us to ensure that our children are present at church and at Sunday school, at mission friends on Sunday evenings. Oh, let's take active steps to make sure that they are not only hearing about God's love, but they see it in action every day. Because teaching our kids deeply and daily about faith doesn't just shape their spiritual lives. Oh, it shapes their entire character and their worldview. It's about making faith a living, breathing part of their everyday experiences. So as we reflect on this, let us commit to being both teachers and examples of faith every day. Let's ensure that our children not only hear about God's love, but they see it in action in every room of our house, in every part of our day. As we recognize the importance of teaching our children deeply and daily, embedding the principles of faith into every conversation and interaction, we come to understand that these teachings need fertile ground in order to take root. See, the lessons that we impart about God's love and wisdom are most effective when they are reinforced by the environments in which we live and the schedules that we keep. See, it's not enough just to to speak of God's truths, but we have to live them out in spaces that we inhabit and in the moments that we share. This leads us to our next crucial point of sanctifying our spaces and moments. See, just as we actively teach our children the ways of faith, we also must curate our homes and our daily routines to reflect these values. When we turn our daily, our living spaces into sanctuaries of faith and and our daily routines into rituals of devotion, we provide a consistent living example to our children and ourselves of what it truly means to walk with God. Now let's explore how we can transform our homes into visible expressions of our faith and how sanctifying our everyday moments can deepen our family's spiritual journey and strengthen our collective testimony to the world around us. Sanctify spaces, sanctify moments. Sanctify spaces, sanctify moments. The word sanctify simply means to make holy. Now, it's not just about creating places or, or times that are holy. It's about transforming our everyday environments and routines into reflections of our faith. We read, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, that they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write on them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Here Moses instructed the Israelites to write God's commandments on the door frames of their houses and gates. It's a a directive that extended God's presence into the very structure of their homes and daily lives. This historical practice underscores a powerful principle still relevant today. That our environments influence our thoughts, our actions, and our spirits. Now consider your own home for just a moment. You know, it likely displays what's dear to you. Family photographs line the walls. Or children's trophies are perched up on shelves. Or perhaps you have that dedicated man cave that's filled with memorabilia of your favorite sports team. They're not just decorations. No, they're declarations of what we value. Now ask yourself this. Does your home reflect your faith as clearly as it does your hobbies or achievements? Does your home reflect your faith as clearly as it does your hobbies or achievements? See, sanctifying our spaces, it's more than just hanging a a, a cute little cross or or, or placing a, a Bible on a coffee table. It's about creating an environment where every item Every arrangement speaks to God's presence and his love. It could be as simple as maybe dedicating a corner of a a room for, for prayer and reflection. Where anybody in the home can just go to seek peace with God. 
Or maybe it involves setting up an area where, where daily devotions can take place without distractions of games and electronics, making it a central part of your living space. But sanctification, this process of being made holy, goes beyond physical spaces. It includes our time as well. How we choose to spend our moments can sanctify them, turning even the most mundane activities into acts of worship. How do we start our day? We start by checking our phones or do we begin with prayer? Do our evenings end with binge watching TV shows or do they close with a, a time of reading the Bible together as a family or personal reflection of God's word? See, this practice of sanctifying our spaces and moments, it does not stand alone. What it does, it builds on the foundation of loving God fully and teaching our children diligently. And it complements these by providing tangible, visible frameworks for living out our faith. See, when our children, oh, they're watching. When our children see that our homes and schedules reflect our beliefs, they learn that faith is not just something that we talk about or worse, say that they need, but we don't really back it up. They see it's something that we live every day in every way. So let's challenge ourselves. This week, I want you to take a walk around your home. Consider, what does my home say about my faith? Are there some things that you need to change to make it better reflect your belief in every room? Perhaps you need to start a new tradition of morning and evening or evening prayers in a specific spot or redesign a space where maybe you can put some Christian books or mementos or, or scriptures that inspire and teach. But we also need to reflect on our schedules, don't we? Can we carve out daily moments dedicated to God? Ensuring that our time aligns with our spiritual priorities as much as our professional or personal ones. See, as we sanctify our spaces and moments, we create a living testimony of our faith, not just for our families, but for all who enter our homes. You see, these sanctified spaces and moments become sources of light and peace providing comfort and spiritual nourishment to all who encounter them. So today, today I invite you to take action. Make your faith visible in your home, in your daily routines. Let every space, every moment declare that you are a follower of Christ. And let these sanctified spaces in times inspire you and others to grow closer to God. Oh, let us be intentional, intentional about what we display in our homes and how we schedule our time. Let our environments and our calendars proclaim that our lives, oh, we are truly centered around Christ. And having explored how we can sanctify our spaces and the moments making our homes and our daily routines reflections of our faith, we see the beautiful potential of a life that is wholly dedicated to God. And by integrating our faith into every corner of our existence, we not only teach by words, but we profoundly live by example. And our homes become living sanctuaries. And every moment spent within them becomes a testament to our commitment to God. But the journey doesn't end with creating sacred spaces or carving out dedicated times of worship and reflection. These actions are merely the beginning. The true essence of our faith becomes evident in not just how we set up our homes or schedule our days, but in how these sanctified spaces and moments transform us and those around us. 
It's about the impact of our live faith has on our community, on our family, on our church, and on ourselves. So as we draw our time together to a close this morning, Oh, let's reflect on the call to live out our faith more boldly, more visibly, and in every aspect of our lives. How can we ensure that every space that we inhabit and every moment we have is infused with the love and the grace of God? How do we carry this sanctification beyond the doorsteps and into the world? As we contemplate these questions, I invite our musicians to come forward. We're going to soon enter a time of, of invitation, a moment for you to respond to the call of living a sanctified life, grounded in God's Word and led by the Holy Spirit. As we conclude our time today, I want to remind each of us that living a life where faith permeates every room and every moment, it's not just a lofty ideal, something that we, we hope for, but deep down we know that we can never attain. No, it's a tangible reality that's made possible through the gospel of Jesus Christ through the guiding presence of the Holy Spirit. You see, it's not by our strength alone that we sanctify our daily lives, but it's by God's grace working through us. You see, when Jesus walked on the earth, he transformed ordinary places into spaces of divine encounters. And oftentimes, he didn't do it by, by, by grand acts, but through simple, meaningful interactions. And friends, this same Jesus invites us to see our homes, our schedules, and our routines as areas where his grace can operate wonderfully. Remember, it's not about achieving perfection in our efforts, but it's about making progress step by step with God's grace as our constant God. Now, I get it. I know the thought of, of living this way might seem daunting to you. You might fear falling short or maybe even wondering, I don't even know how to start. But let me assure you, that you're not alone on this journey. God is with you. His spirit is in you. Your church family stands ready to support you. Because we are all progressing together. And God's grace is sufficient for us even when we stumble. So today, if you feel the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart, if you're ready to, to start making your life a living testimony of the faith that you profess, or if today is the day that you decide to follow Jesus for the first time, please respond. <laughs> Maybe you've been thinking about baptism, and yes, we'll change out the water. Perhaps maybe you wish to officially join our fellowship here at Central Baptist Church. As we sing our hymn of invitation, I'm going to be standing right down here front, ready to welcome anyone who has a decision to share because, look, you're not just coming forward. You're stepping into a community. It's committed to growing together in faith. But if you're not ready to come forward, that's okay too. But I would ask you to fill out the little connection card there in your bulletin just a simple way for you to, to let us know your thoughts, to ask for prayer, to start a conversation. You can drop it off in the offering plate as you leave. But, but do not delay because the call to live out our faith daily is an urgent call. 
It's a call to live not just any life, but a life so richly infused with God's presence that every single day bears testimony of his enduring love and grace. So may this hymn, Living for Jesus, be your moment of commitment, a declaration that you are not just hearing the word, but you are doing it, living it. So let's embrace this call together today. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. God, for your time together. God, for the words that we have shared, for the lessons learned. God, we, we have explored how to love you fully, to teach our children deeply. God, to sanctify our spaces and moments, we ask for your strength. Oh, for your wisdom to carry out this truth into our daily lives. Lord, help us not just to hear your word, but to live it, to make our homes and our hearts true reflections of your love. God, may you grant us the courage to create sanctuaries of faith in every single corner of our existence where your presence is felt and your love is known. God, I just ask for your blessing on every person. God, that we might be lights in the darkness, shine hope and grace. God, give us, guide us as we, as we strive to live out the gospel, both in words and in our actions, in every moment of our lives. Oh, we ask these things in the precious name of Jesus who leads us and sustains us in every step of the way. Amen.